Okay, thank you so much, Chairman. And I just want to emphasize that you and I, both sides of the aisle, agree on the same goal here, that we want to figure out um, affordable access to all prescriptions for all people and just bring some of my insight as a physician to this committee. And I think I want to talk about insulin just for a second, and I appreciate our, our first, our, our per, you're a person's testimony on this. This is a prescription I've, I've written for thousands of times, and it's part of this opaque game. I call it the opaque game. There's a list price and a net price. The list price of insulin has gone up, up, up thousands of times percent, and that's what the out-of-pocket is based upon. So, so the, the person that testified today, the Medicare patient, whoever, they're paying out-of-pocket based on the list price. But the net price, in many instances, has gone down since 2007. And this is where the, the opaque process happens. As far as I know, this is the only business in America that's allowed to have legal kickbacks. So there are legal kickbacks from the middlemen to, to big pharma, as well as insurance companies, and we don't know who else. And that's the opaque process. There's clawbacks from community pharmacists, and subsequently we're, we're losing more community pharmacies than ever before. And I think there's two simple solutions. You know, the first one is transparency. I think if, if my parents, 83 years of age, living in the home that I grew up in, who balance their checkbook every day, don't have a credit card, if they would see where those kickbacks are going, they would raise cane. And I think that Cong all of Congress could see that. And I think the second step is to eliminate kickbacks, that these kickbacks have to stop and all rebates should go to the patient. So that's the, th those are the two solutions I hope we could agree to work upon. Um, I want to turn and talk about uh, innovation, though, how innovation is important as well, that I think that of all the, you know, the top 10 drugs that are in the world today uh, over the last four or five years were all discovered, made here in America. But I think uh, this goes to my point on process. Vinyl inhalers is another great example. One of our folks talked about that. Vinyl inhalers, something I've written thousands of prescriptions for. And about five, six years ago, I was writing a prescription, and the, it was an OB patient, so she came back in a week and said, Dr. Marshall, I think you gave the wrong prescription. It went from $28 to $168. And I said, oh, no, that's a generic. Your pharmacist must have made a mistake. Let me pick up the phone and call and talk to him. And sure enough, what we found out is the EPA had, got, had uh, decided all the dispensers but one were not, were not environmentally friendly. It gave one person control of that entire market. And I said, well, certainly someone will, will break onto the uh, world scene here and make a new dispensing unit. But I found out it would take five to 10 years and a billion dollars, perhaps, to get that certified. So there's mul multiple opportunities here to improve that process. And, and I know that some of my colleagues have legislation that would do that as well. I really think it's important that we protect innovation. And my question is going to go to Mr. Brill on this. You know, as I think about the miracles of COVID, in January 2020, uh, I reached out to the CDC to tell them my concern about the COVID virus. And, um, they weren't quite as concerned as I was, and so I immediately turned to the private sector. And as the CDC kind of failed rolling out their testing, I asked the private sector to start working on testing, on therapeutics, and on vaccines, uh, knowing that this was going to be a world problem very, very soon. And thanks to those folks, a miracle you know, occurred, and we were able to develop a vaccine in months. What well, typically takes five or 10 years, they did in months. We uh, implemented many processes that were improved the, F the FDA process of approval that I think that should be looked at long term as well. Um, so anyway, I think there's this balance between innovation, encouraging innovation, and not stifling it with government price controls uh, ver versus um, not, not allowing innovation to occur. So, Mr. Brill, let me just give you a second here to kind of speak about balancing this innovation and the cost of, of medicines and, and price controls. What price can, what would price controls do to innovation in America? Uh, thank you, Senator, for your question. Um, obviously, policymakers are interested in, in both of these objectives, both uh, ensuring uh, new and, and innovative medicines and the vaccines that were, are becoming a, more and more available every day um, are, are the clearest example of that. Um, and this science was developed over years, uh, public and private investments uh, together. We want to make sure to nurture and promote and, and facilitate this type of research 
um, and these investments over time. Um, and, and, and quite frankly, the, the credit goes not only to those manufacturers who have successfully brought products uh, to market so far, but to all of the researchers who are working on vaccines, including those, quite frankly, whose, whose efforts have failed. That's the innovative process um, that we want to, to foster. Um, how to balance that against our desires to keep prices low is, is, is the challenge. And in my view, the, the answers to those challenges are best met by finding ways to create uh, more competition rather than more price controls in the market. And that means um, uh, more generics, not just a generic, but multiple generics to compete, making sure that those generics are allowed onto the market in a timely fashion. Um, and, uh, and, the, and the other type of competition that can be important is what's referred to as brand to brand competition. Um, this often doesn't have the kind of effects we would like to see on list prices, but does, can, it does and can have that kind of positive effects that we're hoping for on net prices, uh, which are an important price in the system as well. Yeah, thank you so much, and I yield back.